Pues, ¿cómo se llama usted? So, what's your name? So my name is Jose Salvador Gonzalez. I'm 37 years old. I'm working in an association known as Casacito, where I found my real calling, which is working with youth to help them ignite their love for learning and to do some mathematics, which lays the foundation for them in order to to grow as well as for the country. Have you worked with indigenous children? In Antigua, no. Antigua is a region of Guatemala in which... Antigua is a region in Guatemala in which the indigenous population is much less because of the high cost of living. In, in every sense possible. Overall, in terms of housing, it's extremely expensive to live in Antigua. So indigenous people have decided to, to sell what they had in Antigua and move to the outskirts of the city. So they were here before. Before there were a ton of indigenous people. But little by little, they've been misplaced by foreigners who come in because it's such a beautiful place to be especially in comparison to other areas in Guatemala. So they've sort of decided to live in the outskirts of the city. We've heard that people, we've heard people say that 90% of Guatemalans are indigenous, of, of indigenous descent, but that they actually don't consider themselves indigenous. No, but in fact, actually, to call someone indigenous is taken as an insult. They don't feel proud about being who they really are. Do you think that this discrimination comes from the Civil War? No, this comes from way before. So we've been given the term Chapin. If you guys didn't know, it's a term that was given by the conquistadors who came to Guatemala during the conquest of the Americas. And according to historians and linguists, uh, the term chapinismo sort of gives this idea of being a bum and being lazy. So that's, that's sort of where discrimination comes from. And that's sort of where it comes up for sure. And this has actually gotten stronger with time until today. If you call someone an indio, it's taken in as an insult. A lot of people feel proud of who they are. But, but given, you know, indigenous people are sort of so introverted and very patient, they feel intimidated by the term in indigenous. For the majority of the Guatemalans, it's considered an uh, insult, and so they feel intimidated by this as well. So with respect to education, so this discrimination also exists in schools with the teachers. Are there teachers that are mostly Ladinos, or how is it in terms of education? Education is a huge problem in Guatemala. They actually invest more money in the military rather than in education. They had a study recently that they invest only about 16 quetzales a year per student. It's about $2 a year. This is a huge issue in Guatemala. With, with respect to discrimination, a lot. Especially with women, with the indigenous women. I've realized that for a father, an indigenous father, it's almost a disgrace to have a female child. They just, they're born with the only right of actually getting married very quickly, making family, and that the other person um, take care of them. 
Nowadays, they're trying to sort of uh, break from this idea. They're trying, trying to include women in, to study. It's already started with Latinos, where it's already now very common that a, a woman study. But with indigenous people, yeah, there's this problem where the father thinks that uh, the female child is, is an investment that's not going to give a return, that the child's going to marry very young and she's not going to continue to study. Could you talk a little bit about, do you think that indigenous people can easily es escape from poverty? Indigenous people, it's proven that by a lot of people that they are an extremely intelligent race, very, very intelligent. And it's true. Indigenous, the indigenous races in, in Guatemala, there are about 23 or so. It's true that they, they come from the Mayans, from the last of the Mayans. Yeah, the, the, the Mayan race was super intelligent. They have actually a lot of capacity to learn. But the problem is, is they don't have the opportunity, and sometimes they don't have the, the, the ability, the economic ability to do so. But in reality, indigenous people are actually very intelligent. And why don't they have the resources necessary to escape poverty? Well, in the first place, because parents have this idea still that a child is more beneficial in working the land because they generate money right away. This is one of the, the biggest problems, that there isn't this I understanding that, that the, the child should study and that they're going to actually be able to um, invest in their future. They don't see them as an investment. They see them as someone who has to just give immediate results. Secondly, the complete uh, abandonment of the government, the complete abandonment of the government, I can assure you that a community, indigenous community very close to a city, for example, Chimaltenango, there are more churches than schools. This is sad. This is sad. So these are the type of resources that we, we, we have in Guatemala. Like I said, it's impossible with what the government gives to education to actually meet everyone's. Could one say that uh, indigenous people think in terms of the long, long term, but not the short term, is just to get the end of the day? Yeah, to end the day well. And this is one of the biggest problems because the parents prefer that students go work out in the field so they can bring money. They don't think in terms of the investment of the future. This is sort of the thought process of, in, of the indigenous person. Ladinos, and I can include myself in this group, we are, I can qualify myself as a little, a little laid back, a little laissez-faire, kind of slow. Like we're just sort of forced to, to learn. And they give us sort of everything, and then we don't take advantage of them. And we're not really concerned about in, with this idea that I spent all my money today, I don't really care what happens tomorrow. So it's a little indigenous people sort of wait for the opportunities that we have. And, and the ones that actually do have it, we don't take advantage of it. And really, with the Guatemalans who are Latinos, we are the ones that actually are, are the ones that are responsible for making sure that Guatemala progresses. If Guatemala progresses, logically, that the indigenous people are also going to progress. Because they're going to see who they sell their harvest to. They're going to see who, who, they, who they sell. They're going to actually create infrastructure to be able to send out their harvest. So logically, this is this is pro, this is progress. This is progress. And Latino, Guatemalan Latinos, we just tend to not take advantage of things.